Could you please introduce yourself and tell us more about your experience in the art insurance field? So my name is Jean Gazonson. I am actually the CEO of uh, Arte Generali. But I started in the art insurance field in AXA Art, where I was COO globally and also CEO of the UK operations for several years. Um, I have experienced myself in different fields of the organization with a clear purpose when joining Generali to set up a new kind of art insurance business focused on services and innovation. And that's actually together with a wonderful team we have developed and put in place and we're trying to make five. So what, in your opinion and experience, is the role of the insurer when it comes to managing risk? So let's say, for example, that we are a museum and we are in charge of all operation and of protecting the cultural heritage. Where in, in this long and complex process and structure does the insurer fit in? Where can it actually support? Well, there are many ways in which uh, an insurer can help an institution, museum, public or private, in order to better protect the heritage, uh, the preserve, the, the own, uh, very often the curate. I think the first thing is that you have to bear in mind that insurance is a transfer of risk, so that ultimately, when a museum is insured by a private insurer, the transfer of risk to the insurer creates a fiduciary duty to make sure that uh, the execution of the contract is naturally done, but also that all the needed prevention protections are duly taken care of. And in that sense, I think that we have uh, naturally a role of uh, preservation in the sense that we need to bring always the best uh, risk management services to help the institution develop the right plan to protect the pieces. It's a quick question of security, naturally, preventing the theft, but also a question of physical protection in case of natural disaster, in case of flood, in case of fire. And, and all those things are made even more important now with uh, the increase in terms of frequency of uh, the natural disasters claims. In that sense, we need to work in a very structured way with the museum, with the institution, and together with our broker partner in order to bring those services. It's a question of risk survey, it's a question of detailed analysis of the building and its characteristics, the processes, the people we are working with, trying always to find the weak point and to try to put measures in order to compensate for it. It's also very often trying to organize also the crisis, because very often when the severe claims arrive linked to a natural catastrophe disaster, you need to put conservation measures in place. Very often you can evacuate the pieces in advance and therefore reduce the risk, or you can make sure that in case of disaster striking, there are emergency services intervening very fast to preserve the pieces and to ensure fast restoration. The speed in execution of uh, emergency measures is often uh, correlated with the quality of the result. So speed is key in order to preserve pieces in case of, of disaster. So if I summarize, we, our role is to help in the prevention by having a good analysis of the risk and helping the institution understand the nature of the risk, putting, helping the institution also putting the plan to prevent things from happening, and then helping if the disaster struck to have a very efficient plans and very good preservation of what can be preserved in case of catastrophe. In regards to what you were just uh, mentioning, um, as an insurer, you rely on different kind of experts. So could you mention some of these and explain why this network that you usually rely on is so important in the process and uh, why you think it, it is? Well, uh, an institution, a museum, is a complex organization. There are many dimensions you are you need to take care of in those prevention plans and in the analytics before. And uh, let's say there are the building structure, you know, 
how it has been built, the quality of the materials, the roofing, uh, the waterproofing. Uh, well, th this is typically uh, an engineer knowledge. I mean, you cannot give that to someone who has strictly no idea about the construction. Alarm system. I mean, this is an industry which is changing very fast, new technology coming very soon. And therefore, you need always to have them tested by the best experts. And, and this requires people really of the art. Um, climate control, an even more sensitive topics now that the climate is changing fast. We have an increase in, uh, in humidity, an increase in heat, and very often also of dust in the summer. So you, all those things need to be tested by a climatation, someone who is absolutely knowledgeable about air conditioning and about the way those systems work. I, that, those are few I can quote, you know. And, but you need also an overarching coordination to make sure that each of those professionals are bringing their knowledge to the chain of tests, but they are doing that in a very well organized and methodological way. And you have an order to progress and to inquire. And you need also to weight those different risks and also to combine those risks. Because it's not because you do an, an, an analytical task that in case of a claims, the things are not combined as an issue. Very often, when catastrophe is struck, it's a whole series of things which are happening uh, to a place. And therefore, you need also to have, I would say, a real risk professional who are able to understand the dynamics of a, of a catastrophe, the dynamics of a claim, and how you can prevent the dynamics from occurring or how you can result, you can reduce the consequences of the, of the dynamics. So those are real, I would say, risk engineer, risk, uh, risk engineer. So you spoke about the role of insurer today. Uh, the last question that I will ask, uh, I would like to ask is, where do you see the insurer go? Like, what do you think is the future of the of the insurer? I think when we, our fiduciary duty is wider uh, than simply preserving um, the liabilities which has been transferred to us. I think we have also a moral and uh, a, a society duty in order to make sure that this knowledge is shared uh, to a wider public. Because it's not because we, we need also only to preserve our clients. We need, in fact, the whole community to benefit from the knowledge. And this is why we have been working with this Charisma project, is to make sure that we will build a corpus of analytics in order to help the museum uh, preserve their collections. We will also build good training for the museum staff to learn actively how to practice those. And then we will build the preservation plans in order to really structure the way the cultural institution are, are preventing risks. So our role is not only reduced to our client vicinity, but it's a role, I think, towards the whole community of art lovers and more generally to the national public, because cultural heritage is, I would say, the backbone of the society and keeping the memory, keeping also the knowledge attached to cultural heritage is definitely, for me, key to keep uh, sanity in a democratic system. So this is really what we are trying to do ultimately. Thank you, Jean.